Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the highly anticipated collaboration probably of the year. I'm reviewing the Colourpop Times Raw Beauty Christie collection. This collection is stunning. It's so beautiful, so much cottagecore vibes, you guys. You know me, I'm all about that cottagecore life, so I'm obsessed with the collection and I feel like this collab was just bound to happen anytime soon, so I'm so happy for Christy, I feel like, I know everyone's saying this, but I really do feel like it's her year. I'm just so happy for her. So I'm going to show you guys the entire collection and what it looks like on me. I'm going to share my thoughts on it, um, swatches. I have some comparisons and you'll see the three looks towards the end of the video. So if you guys are interested in any of that, then please continue watching. All right, so I want to start off with the packaging first, just because it's just so stunning. This is what the box looks like. I believe if you just order the collection you probably will get it in this box it's just not like a PR box oh and by the way Colourpop did send me the entire collection I just want to note that before we got started I completely forgot the intro anyway let's start off with the first item in the collection the eyeshadow palette this is called at forest sight which is so cute this is 20 US dollars which is a little bit more extensive than the usual 12 pans I believe the usual 12 pans is 18 US dollars so two dollars more you will get 10 mattes and two metallic shadows so definitely more on the matte side which I personally do love I always say this I always want more matte than metallic and although it's a little bit more on the colorful side I do feel like these tones are quite easy to play around with like color story wise you can do so many color combos with this palette I feel a lot of these shades um, are sort of medium to dark so they're super pigmented and just really rich in color the formulation on the mattes for the the most part a lot of them are that very soft buttery texture so you will get a bit of kickback when you are playing with these shadows but I don't experience any fallout on my face I will say that I don't think many of these colors is just so special and unique and I was contemplating if I wanted to do comparisons or not because this is a collab and I just want you guys to take the collab as it is I don't want to compare it to anything else because for sure she worked so hard on this I mean of course all of the collections a lot of work goes behind it but this collection specifically I wasn't really sure so I'm just going to give you one comparison for each shade so just sort of like a overall palette comparison and you will see that there are actually a lot a lot of I'm gonna say dupes like some shadows look exactly the same as some other shadows that they already have from Colourpop but it doesn't take away from how beautiful this palette is and how well it works together as a whole and I think overall this collection as a whole is just so cohesive and so well thought out you will really see that if you guys do pick up the entire collection so I don't want to take away from that by doing the comparisons but in case you know some of you guys wanted this collection and you couldn't purchase it I really really enjoyed this palette I loved all the looks that I created and I just love how this palette is set out as well it just makes it so easy to work with so I think she did an amazing job I think she really did cover everything you get transition shadows medium tones and then deeper tones to deepen out in the look so if you wanted to create something very natural if you wanted to create something very dramatic and glam you can do that although it's a little bit on the colorful side a lot of these tones are a little bit more more like jewel tone and on the muted side. I then want to talk about the cream or cream eyeshadows. I don't know why I always say cream, but everyone else says cream. Because cream to me is C R E A M. So I always pronounce this as creme. I hope you guys don't mind. But she released three and these are seven US dollars each. I will say overall these three liners, they work amazing. Top tier quality. They're pigmented, smooth and rich buttery into the waterline. I adore these. These three shades literally represent the collection and it pairs so so well with the palette. Like I did not have to try and use these. They naturally just fit in with the looks that I did and it was just magic. I will say that this brown one, Woodsy, is nothing too too special in color. They recently released um, a shade called Sunny Veil that came in their Sunflower collection and it's also quite comparable 
comparable to Kathleen's Creme Gel Liner in Mr. Bing. It works amazing, but I feel like a lot of people might already have this in your collection. Um, and shade-wise, it's very comparable to other brown eyeliners that I already have from the Creme Gel Liner family. Bare Thyme, or Thyme, I can't remember which way is the right way to pronounce it. You guys will correct me. You guys always correct me when I mispronounce things. I mean that in a nice way. Um, you guys are always polite when you correct me as well, so thank you so much. You guys are so nice to me. But this one is very, very comparable to one of their older creme gel liners in the shade Teaspoon. I would say once it's in the waterline, it's going to give you a very similar effect. So this one is more on the green side and Teaspoon, I guess, is more on the bluey side. Um, but it's very, very similar. I feel like once in the waterline, you can't tell too much. But there is a difference if you wanted a comparison. And I think the most unique one to me is Marigold. I did compare it to Punch, which is their yellow eyeliner. And you can just see this one's a little bit mustard with a hint of orange in there as well. This one in my collection is the most unique and I love how this looks in my waterline so anytime that I'm wearing something a little bit more on the warmer side definitely going to be grabbing this one so love that let's talk about the super shock shadows so there are four in total you can get this in a set for 28 US dollars or seven US dollars each um, which is the same price pretty much. So because there are only two metallics in the eyeshadow palette, she came out with Super Shocks to complement the eyeshadow palette in case you wanted more metallics with that. Go through the shades individually. We'll start off with Olympic. And this is the one that I use for my inner corners for two of the three looks. It does pull very like white, like silvery white on me, which is not my sort of go-to metallic shade, but it is a really nice inner corner highlight. We then have my C and this one was just so beautiful. I wore this in my first look and I love how it looks. It has sort of like pinky reflex in there. Very, very eye-catching. And then we have like a Moss. This is sort of like a duochrome. It's the shadow that I have on my lids today. This one is very unique and I think the standout one and paired with these green shadows or even with oranges would look so, so pretty. And then we have Campfire, which is a very strong orange. I do have another Super Shock very similar in shade to this so in my collection it's not super eye-catching and lastly in the collection she released two luxe glosses and these are 90 US dollars each so I really do love the luxe gloss formulation if you are not a big fan of glosses then I actually think you would really like the luxe gloss because they are not sticky and they are extremely thin on the lips they don't feel very thick and like goopy and the shine on the luxe glosses isn't like they're so juicy glosses or like they're ultra glossy lips. These do have a shine and a gloss for sure but you can see on my lips right now it's not super super like juicy and plumping. I think it is a really nice beginner glosses. And the first shade I have here is called Windflower which is a little bit more opaque. Um, it does have little glitter sprinkled throughout. And then the second gloss is called Glacier which is the gloss that I'm wearing on top of my lipstick. Um, and I do like both. I like both for lip toppers. But I think when it comes to glosses if you already have something very similar so like a pinky gloss and then a clear gloss with lots of glitters in it then I wouldn't say you necessarily need to pick up these ones because I feel like with glosses especially when they are quite like sheer when applied they all look quite similar at the end you know what I mean of course there are differences but I just feel like overall once on the lips they do look quite similar but nonetheless I do really really love both shades I'm actually gonna keep these in my top drawer for a little bit so I can keep them in rotation and continue playing with them because I really really did enjoy these as lip toppers okay so that was pretty much my rundown and my review on the entire Raw Beauty Christy collection with Colourpop Cosmetics. I think Christy did such an amazing job with this collection. Like truly, if you guys picked up the entire collection and you are playing with this collection as a whole, it is just so cohesive. You can feel like she really made these products to complement each other and it just shows. So yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you guys enjoyed that portion. We can now move into the three looks.
So jumping straight into the first look, I'm going to start off with the shade Old Growth and this is going to be our transition shadow slash base color. So I'm going to work that onto my lid space first and then I'll slowly blend that up towards my crease and a brow bone. I kind of want most of the shadow a little bit closer and onto my lid. I also take the same shadow onto my lower lash line as well just to get a good base color going. Then I'm going to go into the shade Amanita and I'm taking this on a thin angled brush and I'm actually going to start creating my wing. I'm only going to start on the outer third of my wing so you can see I'm not taking it all the way in on my lash line and I'm also creating a bit of a thicker wing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to like slowly create a graphic wing. So from the tip of your wing you want to bring that in towards your crease fold and sort of create like a sideways V shape. I also take I'm Anita onto my lower lash line as well. But I'm taking the shadow again on an angle brush but I'm only going to focus it at the outer third of my eyes making sure I am connecting that wing. Then I'm going to go into the shade Let It Rain and taking a very very small fine angled brush again I'm going to really press this up against my lash line. I'm going to be keeping this very very thin. I just want to create more depth and darkness on the lash line and because I will be wearing lashes I think it's important to make the lash line a little bit darker. Now I am taking the Super Shock Shadow from the collection in the shade Mycelium. I'm going to be using my pinky finger to dab this onto my lid space and then I'll go in with a brush to sort of blend that out. I just want this to be all over the lid and just diffused and blown out. And also from the collection, taking the Crim Gel Liner in the shade Woodsy, I'm going to use this to tightline my upper waterline and also my bottom waterline. But on my bottom waterline, I'm only tightlining the outer third. And then finally, popping on my lashes. These ones are from House of Lashes in the style Natalia Light. Alright you guys, so this is the first look completed. I definitely wanted to create a look focusing more on the pinky and purple shadows in the palette because from what I've seen, a lot of people have created a look with the yellows and the greens, which we will definitely get to, but I did want to show you another side of the palette that I personally have not seen yet, so I hope you guys like this first look. And now we are on to the second look. I'm going to start off with the shade Chanterelle and this is going to be our transition shadow. So I'm just going to take a small blending brush and work that into my crease using windshield wiping motions. Usually I would take a fluffier brush but I want this to be a little bit more precise and like in my crease. So I am working it into the socket of my eye. And also you can notice that I am doing my eyes first for this look. Just in case I did any mistakes I could rub it off. Then I'm going to go into the shade Rainer and I'm going to take an even smaller blending brush and I'm going to do exactly the same thing but I'm going to try and focus it a little bit lower than Chanterelle because we do want that sort of gradient effect so just working a little bit lower will help you achieve that. So again, just going in with windshield wiping motions right into the socket of my crease. Then I'm actually going to take the P. Louise eyeshadow base. You can use concealer for this, no problem at all. It's just what I have. And I'm going to use this to cut out my crease. So I go in with a very, very fine paintbrush to sort of map out my cut crease line. And then I do take that base all over my lid. I am pretty much going along my crease line. I'm not really going above it like how I usually would. I'm keeping it a little bit lower this time. Then I'm going to take the Super Shock Shadow in the shade Campfire. I'm going to use my ring finger to dab that on onto my lid, pretty much on top of that P. Louise eyeshadow base. This is going to be the first layer and the base color um, to really start off this dimensional eye look. Then I'm going to go into the shade West Coast and I'm going to take this right along the cut crease line. Because Campfire, the Super Shock, is more of like a medium metallic 
like it doesn't really emphasize the cut crease so going in with West Coast which is a lot brighter um, and lighter it's going to help emphasize that cut crease and just dragging it along the cut crease line is going to help emphasize that Then I'm going to go into the shade Home Grown. I'm going to start using this to create my wing. This part of the look is sort of similar to the first look. We are creating another intense outer V. I wasn't planning for it to turn out like this. I'm sorry if the first look and the second look do look a little bit similar, but it's very different in my opinion. But anyway, we're going to create our wing a little bit more dramatic than usual. And then I'm going to take my angled brush and connect that along with the cut crease that we already carved out. I'm going to go back into the shade Arena and I'm going to use this to finish off my liner on my lash line. So you can see I only use Homegrown the dark brown at the outer corners of my eyes and then I'll go in with Reina to focus that at the inner third of my lash line. And we can sort of see like a soft gradient liner. And then next I'm actually going to take a bit of Chanterelle and Reina and mix the two. I'm going to run this all over my lower lash line. I'm going to diffuse this out as well while taking it quite low and as you can tell obviously I have done my base off camera to finish up my lower lash line. I will then go in with homegrown and I'm going to use this to define my bottom lash line and also to connect the liner at the outer corner. I think that's really important. I will go in with the cream gel liner from the collection in the shade Marigold. I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline. I'm going to pop on my lashes now. I am wearing the Style Birdie from Petite cosmetics and lastly I am going to highlight my inner corners with the super shock shadow in the shade Olympic and this, you guys, is the first look completed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This look was actually inspired by Julia Adam. She didn't use this palette, but she used the palette from Mount Cosmetics, but I felt like the color story was quite similar, so I try to recreate it, but then I end up doing something completely different. But I love the final outcome, and I hope you guys love the final outcome as well. And now onto the final look, I'm going to start off with the shade Puffball and this is going to be sort of our transition and base color. So you can see I'm packing the shadow onto my lid space and then I'll slowly blend that up to my crease and toward my brow bone. I'm going to try my best to blow this out and just diffuse this all over our lids. I also take the same shadow onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just going to sweep that from the outer corner right to the inner corner, making sure at the outer corner you are connecting the shadow at the point. Then I'm going to go into the shade Fiddlehead and I'm going to start packing this on at the outer third of my eyes by using circular motions, just packing on the color there first and getting the most pigment there. I'll also take this into the inner third of my eyes as well and because my inner part of my lid space is a little bit hooded, I have to go in with a pencil brush to make sure I am getting the product there evenly. But I go back and forth with my brushes just to get this blended out. You just want to make sure you are keeping the middle of your lid space blank of any eyeshadow. I also take Fiddlehead onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just going to press this up against my waterline. Then I'm going to go into the shade Emerald City and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. I'm going to pack this on at the outer third of my eyes using stamping and circular motions to get this blended out. And then I'll go in with another pencil brush um, at my inner third to deepen out that as well. Because working in baby steps would definitely help give you more of like a blended gradient look. So I do recommend always working in baby steps from a light to dark. Also taking Emerald City onto my lower lash line as well. I'm going to really focus this really close to my lash line and I'm going to sweep that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. 
Now I'm gonna take the Super Shock Shadow in the shade Like a Moss and I'm going to be using my ring finger and I'm gonna tap this on right at the center of my eyes. Wherever your finger touches first, that is where the most pigmentation is going to be. So make sure you are getting it right at the center because we want the light to really grab and catch this beautiful duochrome shadow. Um, I then go in with a little brush just to blend out the edges um, and make sure it's well blended into the mattes because you don't want it to look like you just have like a green stripe on your lid space. You want to blend that into the matte shadows. And then I take the other Super Shock shadow in the shade Olympic and I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners. And now I'm just going in with my black liquid liner. I'm going to use this to line my lash line, create a wing. I go in with a black eyeshadow to smudge and extend that wing out. Then taking the cream gel liner from the collection in the shade Spare Time, Spare Thyme. I'm just going to use this to tight line my entire bottom waterline and it's honestly the best eyeliner to match the eyeshadow emerald city. It's like the perfect match. All right, now it's time to pop on my lashes. These ones are from House of Lashes in the style Bedore Light. And this, you guys, is the final look completed. I hope you guys like the final outcome. I feel like these kind of tones really represent this collection. I feel like we've seen a lot of looks with these types of colors for this palette, but I really love the final outcome. I wanted to do another halo eye for you guys since you guys love this technique. Alright you guys, so those were my three looks. Be sure to let me know which look out of the three was your favorite down below. I love how every single look looks so, so different from each other. Like it's a completely different color story, which I love that. I love seeing a good variety coming out of a really small palette. So let me know which one was your favorite down below. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this review, if you guys could give it a thumbs up for me, I would appreciate it so much. It really does help me out and helps my video reach more people. So if you guys didn't enjoy please get a thumbs up but that is pretty much going to complete today's video guys thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already i love you guys and i'll see you in my next video bye